When you're giving her some space, it's important to keep busy with your own life instead of just waiting for her to return. In Stoicism, this idea is about focusing on what's in your control, your actions, your thoughts, and your own life. If you've done all you can to fix things between you, dwelling on it won't help. Waiting and worrying can really wear you down, both mentally and physically. This ties into the Stoic idea of keeping your peace no matter what's going on around you. In this video, we're diving deep into the art of conversation from a Stoic perspective. Stoicism teaches us the value of self-control and wisdom, emphasizing that knowing what to avoid can sometimes be more important than knowing what to say. By the end of this video, you will not only learn how to enhance your conversational skills, but also how to wield your words in a way that can land the girl of your dreams without jeopardizing your chances from the start. So, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more insightful content, and stay with us till the end to transform your approach to conversation using timeless Stoic wisdom. Let's get started. Number one, telling her it's not a big deal. As Stoics, we understand the importance of respecting other people's perspectives and feelings. When a woman tells you something is a big deal to her, it's crucial to respect her feelings and not dismiss them. Imagine she tells you about a problem at work and you casually respond, it's not a big deal. This might seem like a way to reassure her but it actually invalidates her emotions and can make her feel unheard and unimportant. From a Stoic perspective, it's vital to acknowledge that everyone has their own perceptions and emotions. As Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This means that while you control your own reactions and emotions, you should not attempt to control or dismiss those of others. A high-value man, grounded in Stoic principles, understands and respects the emotions of those around him. He knows that true strength lies in managing his own perceptions and feelings rather than trying to alter someone else's. For example, if she says, I'm really stressed about this project. A stoic response would be, I understand that it's stressful for you. How can I support you? On the other hand, an insecure and jealous man might try to downplay her feelings, saying things like, it's not that bad, or you're overreacting. This not only disrespects her, but also reflects his own lack of emotional maturity. Dismissive comments can come off as insensitive and misogynistic. Women, being emotional beings, value empathy and understanding. When you tell her that her feelings are not valid or important, it can be a major turnoff and damage the trust in your relationship. Instead, strive to be a supportive and understanding partner. Listen to her, acknowledge her feelings, and show her that you care. For instance, if she confides in you about an argument with a friend and you respond with, that's not a big deal, you'll get over it, you're effectively telling her that her feelings don't matter. A better approach, aligned with Stoic principles, would be to say, I see that this argument has really affected you. Do you want to talk about it? This shows that you respect her feelings and are there to support her. Remember, being a Stoic doesn't mean being emotionally detached. It means being wise and compassionate, understanding that while you control your own emotions, you must also respect the emotions of others. By doing so, you build deeper, more meaningful connections and embody the true essence of a high-value man. Number two. You look tired. One thing you should never say to a woman is that she looks tired or sick. This kind of comment 
though it may seem harmless or even caring, can be incredibly hurtful. Women, like all people, are deeply conscious of their physical appearance and society places an immense amount of pressure on them to look a certain way. When you say something like, you look tired, or are you feeling sick? It can hit much harder than you might realize. These comments can make women feel self-conscious and less confident about how they present themselves to the world. It's a reminder that someone noticed they aren't looking their best, which can be quite disheartening. Let's say your friend Maria comes to work looking a bit worn out. Instead of pointing it out by saying, Maria, you look exhausted today. You can choose to be more supportive and kind. Perhaps offer a warm smile and say, Hey Maria, how are you doing? Or, is there anything I can do to help you today? This approach shows genuine concern without making her self-conscious about her appearance. Women are often acutely aware of how they look. They have mirrors. They check their appearance regularly. And they have their own self-awareness. They don't need reminders that they don't look their best, especially from others. By refraining from negative comments about their appearance, you show respect and consideration. It's a small but significant way to practice the stoic virtue of kindness. Remember, the essence of Stoicism is to live harmoniously with others and to minimize harm through our actions and words. Remember, the words we choose reflect our character. Stoicism teaches us to be mindful and deliberate with our speech, to avoid causing unnecessary harm. So, next time you feel the urge to comment on someone's tired or sick look, pause and think. Choose words that uplift and support, rather than words that might wound. This is a simple yet powerful way to live a more stoic, compassionate life. In doing so, you embody the principles of Stoicism, showing that you value wisdom, empathy, and the well-being of those around you. This practice not only benefits others, but also fosters a more peaceful and fulfilling life for yourself. Number three, explore her past relationships. We understand that curiosity can sometimes get the best of you, but allowing this curiosity to lead you down the path of probing into her past relationships is a mistake you should avoid. You want a girl to like you and fall in love with you, right? Then never inquire about her past. Don't ask about her past relationships. It can never lead to a positive outcome. Suppose you're on a date. The conversation is flowing smoothly, and there's a genuine connection. Suddenly, you ask her about her ex-boyfriends. The mood shifts instantly. Why? Because by asking about her past relationships, you're displaying insecurity. An insecure man will never be the guy to whom women are attracted. Women are drawn to confidence, strength, and a sense of assurance. They want a man who is comfortable in his own skin, not someone who is constantly comparing himself to others. Nothing beneficial comes out of knowing her past. The only thing that changes is your perception, and most likely it won't be for the better. Instead of building a connection based on the present and future, you get stuck in the past. Her past is something you cannot change or control. By dwelling on it, you only bring unnecessary suffering to yourself and potentially to her. Instead, focus on the present moment and the relationship you are building together now. Embrace the person she is today, not the person she used to be. A confident man doesn't need to know every detail of his partner's past to feel secure. He understands that everyone has a history and what matters most is how they are treating each other now and what they plan for the future. Think of it this way. When you're climbing a mountain, you focus on the path ahead, not the terrain you've already crossed. The same applies to relationships. Consider the words of Marcus Aurelius, 
a renowned Stoic philosopher who said, it never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. This quote reminds us that we often seek validation from others about things that shouldn't matter. Inquiring about her past relationships falls into this category. It's a search for validation that does nothing to improve your self-worth or the quality of your relationship. Instead, build your relationship on trust, respect, and the present moment. Be the kind of man who appreciates her for who she is now, not who she was. Show her that you are confident enough to focus on your future together, rather than being bogged down by past relationships. By embodying this mindset, you not only avoid unnecessary conflicts and insecurities, but also demonstrate that you are a man of depth, confidence, and true understanding. This is the kind of man who naturally attracts and keeps the interest of a high-quality woman. So the next time you're tempted to ask about her past relationships, take a deep breath and remind yourself of the stoic wisdom. Focus on what is within your control. Remember, the essence of stoicism is to live in accordance with nature, to accept the things we cannot change, and to improve ourselves continually. By focusing on these principles, you become a more attractive, confident, and wise partner. Embrace this philosophy and you will find that your relationships and indeed your entire life will flourish. Number four, showing off excessively. One thing you should never tell women about is how much you have. Most guys mistakenly believe that women are gold diggers, but this is not true. While some women may be after wealth, they are not the majority. Many guys act on this incorrect assumption and start bragging about their finances, their wealth, how many cars they own, the luxurious items in their house, the upscale area they live in, and how big their house is. This behavior is not only toxic, but also shows a lack of depth. It indicates that you're insecure and have little to offer beyond material possessions. From a stoic perspective, it's important to focus on the qualities that truly define you as a person, your virtues, values, and character. When you brag about your wealth, you reveal a superficial side of yourself. This shows that you measure your worth by external factors rather than internal strengths. Women can see through this and realize that you lack a genuine personality and are using your wealth as bait. For example, imagine you're on a date and you spend the entire evening talking about your expensive car, your high-end apartment, and your lavish vacations. What message are you sending? You're telling her that you value material things above all else and that you believe these things make you more attractive. This not only bores her, but also makes her question your depth as a person. Instead, Try talking about your passions, your dreams, and the things that truly matter to you. Share stories that reflect your character and experiences that have shaped who you are. This approach not only makes the conversation more engaging, but also allows her to see the real you beyond the material facade. A woman who is genuinely interested in you will be drawn to your character your confidence, and your ability to engage in meaningful conversations. On the other hand, a gold digger might be attracted to your wealth, but will eventually leave you once she has drained your bank account. She will not stick around when times get tough, because her interest was never in you, but in your money. Real connections are built on mutual respect, understanding, and shared values. Therefore, bragging about your wealth is not only unappealing, but also counterproductive. It's important to cultivate and show your true self, your virtues, your wisdom, and your inner strength. These are the qualities that will attract a woman who is interested in you for who you are, not what you have. Remember, a high-value man doesn't need to boast about his wealth. 
His character and actions speak for themselves. Number five, are you really going to wear that? Let's dive deeper into why commenting on what she's wearing is a big no-no. Imagine you're getting ready to go out, feeling good about your choice of outfit. You've spent time picking out what makes you feel comfortable and confident. Then someone makes a snide comment like, are you really going to wear that? How does that make you feel? Probably not great. It's the same for women, but often with a more profound impact. Women face constant scrutiny and societal pressure regarding their appearance. A negative comment about their outfit can feel like a harsh judgment, shaking their confidence and self-worth. From a stoic perspective, we understand the importance of maintaining our inner tranquility and not letting external opinions disturb our peace. However, not everyone has reached that level of inner strength and emotional resilience Many women have faced years of unsolicited opinions about their appearance, which can wear down even the most confident person. When a man questions their choice of clothing, it can feel like an attack, making them doubt themselves and their decisions. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy and a severe blow to their self-esteem. Instead, aim to uplift and support her. If you want to comment on her outfit, do so positively. Tell her she looks fantastic in that dress or that her outfit suits her beautifully. Positive reinforcement not only boosts her confidence, but also strengthens your relationship. When you focus on the positives, you create a supportive environment where she feels valued and appreciated for who she is, not just how she looks. This can lead to a deeper connection and mutual respect, essential components of any healthy relationship. Here's an example. Let's say you're about to head out for a night on the town and she steps out in a new dress. You might think it's not your favorite color or style, but instead of saying, are you sure about that dress? You could say, you look amazing in that dress. It really brings out your eyes. This approach not only avoids unnecessary criticism, but also fosters a positive atmosphere. By focusing on what you genuinely appreciate, you help her feel confident and happy, which can make your time together more enjoyable. Remember, commenting negatively on her clothing choices positions you as a judge, implying she needs to meet your standards. This can create a power imbalance, and make her feel like she has to seek your approval. In a healthy relationship, both partners should feel free to express themselves without fear of judgment. When you avoid negative comments and instead offer support and positivity, you promote equality and respect, which are fundamental stoic principles. So, as a stoic man, practice the art of uplifting rather than criticizing. Understand that your words have power. Use them to build confidence, not tear it down. This way, you honor both her autonomy and your commitment to being a supportive, understanding partner. Embrace the stoic wisdom of focusing on what you can control, your words and actions, and let go of the need to control others. By doing so, you create a more harmonious and loving relationship rooted in mutual respect and genuine care. Number six, talking about your past. When it comes to discussing your past, especially past relationships, it's crucial to be mindful of how you speak. Let's dig deeper into this from a Stoic perspective. Stoicism teaches us to control our reactions and maintain our integrity regardless of the circumstances. Talking about your past relationships says a lot about you. It reveals your character, your maturity, and your emotional intelligence. Oh, many guys, when recounting their past relationships, tend to speak ill of their ex-partners. They call them names, criticize their behavior, and blame them for everything that went wrong. This kind of talk is not only negative, but also reflects poorly on the speaker. Imagine you're on a date with a woman 
and you start trash-talking your ex. She will likely think, if things don't work out between us, he'll probably badmouth me too. This thought can create a barrier of mistrust between you and your current partner. For example, you're sharing a story about your last relationship. Instead of saying, she was always nagging and never appreciated me, you could say, we had different expectations and it didn't work out. But I learned a lot from that experience. This approach shows that you're mature, respectful, and focused on personal growth rather than dwelling on negativity. A true Stoic would approach this situation with a sense of calm and rationality. They would understand that every relationship, whether it ended well or not, is a part of their journey and growth. By speaking positively or at least neutrally about past partners, you demonstrate self-control and respect. You show that you are someone who can maintain dignity and kindness even when discussing difficult topics. Remember, it's not about pretending that everything was perfect, but rather about choosing to focus on the lessons learned and the positive aspects. Be the guy who speaks well of others, who highlights the good, and who refrains from unnecessary negativity. This doesn't mean you have to be overly flattering or dishonest. It's about being fair and balanced in your recollections. In conclusion, being mindful of how you talk about your past, especially past relationships, is essential. It reflects your character and influences how others perceive you. By embodying stoic principles, you can maintain integrity, show respect, and create a positive impression. So the next time you discuss your past, remember to be the guy who speaks positively about others and focuses on growth and learning. Number seven, noticing what she eats. In the realm of stoicism, one of the core principles is recognizing what is within our control and what is not. Commenting on a woman's eating habits falls into the category of things outside our control. This principle is not just about diet, but respecting others' autonomy. When you offer unsolicited dietary advice, you're overstepping boundaries and not respecting her freedom to make her own choices. Imagine this. You're at a dinner party and you see a woman reaching for dessert. You might think you're being helpful by suggesting she skip it, but consider how that makes her feel. It implies she's not capable of making her own decisions or that her choices need validation from you. This is not only disrespectful, but also undermines her confidence. Instead of fostering a supportive environment, your comment can make her feel judged and self-conscious. From a stoic perspective, we should focus on our own behavior and self-improvement. If you aim to attract a high-value woman, become a high-value man yourself. This means taking care of your own health and well-being without imposing your standards on others. A high-value woman is likely to know how to take care of herself, and she doesn't need unsolicited advice from someone who hasn't mastered his own self-discipline. By working on your own habits and becoming the best version of yourself, you set a positive example that others might naturally want to follow. This is far more effective and respectful than trying to dictate someone else's choices. For instance, if you are struggling with your own dietary choices, it's hypocritical to advise others on theirs. A stoic man should lead by example, not by unsolicited counsel. Instead of telling her what to eat, focus on making the best choices for yourself. If you aspire to be with someone who is healthy and fit, ensure you embody those qualities yourself. Your actions speak louder than words, and by demonstrating your commitment to your own health, you inspire others to consider their own habits without needing to say a word. This approach is grounded in humility and self-awareness, key tenets of Stoic philosophy. Women often face unfair societal pressures regarding their appearance and eating habits. By refraining from commenting on what she eats, 
You respect her autonomy and acknowledge the undue pressures she already experiences. It's about showing respect and understanding that everyone has the right to make their own choices without external judgment. Remember, your role is not to control others, but to maintain your own standards. A woman will appreciate a man who respects her choices and leads by example rather than dictating what she should do. By focusing on your growth and respecting the autonomy of those around you, you create a more harmonious and respectful environment. This, in turn, attracts high-value individuals who appreciate these qualities, leading to more meaningful and respectful relationships. Number eight, don't be so self-centered. Ego can be a double-edged sword. While confidence is attractive, egotism is a major turnoff. Picture this, you're on a date, and instead of enjoying the moment, you start boasting about how many women are interested in you. You might think it's impressive, but from her perspective, it's a huge red flag. Bragging about how desirable you are comes off as insecure and self-centered. Let's tie this back to Stoicism, a philosophy that values humility and self-awareness. Stoics believe in focusing on one's virtues and not seeking external validation. By constantly talking about how many women want you, you're doing the exact opposite. You're seeking approval and validation from others to inflate your ego, which goes against the core principles of Stoicism. Instead, practice humility. Humility doesn't mean thinking less of yourself. It means thinking of yourself less. Show interest in her stories, her experiences, and her thoughts. Ask her questions, listen actively, and engage in meaningful conversations. This shows that you value her as a person and not just as another notch on your belt. For example, imagine you're telling her about a recent achievement at work. Rather than saying, everyone at the office admires me for closing that big deal, you could say, I'm really proud of the teamwork and effort that went into closing that big deal. This subtle shift highlights your contribution without making it all about you, and it acknowledges others' efforts, demonstrating humility. Remember, women are more attracted to a man who is confident yet humble. When you refrain from bragging, you show that you're secure in who you are without needing constant validation. If you constantly talk about how desirable you are, she will likely feel that you're not genuinely interested in her, but rather in boosting your own ego. Over time, she'll realize that your self-centered behavior isn't just a quirk, but a fundamental part of who you are. She may not leave immediately, but the seeds of doubt will be planted. Eventually, she'll see that you care more about yourself and about building a genuine connection with her, and she'll decide to walk away. So, if you want to build a meaningful relationship, practice humility. Don't tell her about how many women want you or how you can have any girl you desire. Instead, focus on being present, listening, and showing genuine interest in her as a person. This approach not only aligns with Stoic principles, but also makes you far more attractive and trustworthy in her eyes. Number nine, being overly controlling. When it comes to relationships, respect and trust are the cornerstones of a healthy bond. As Stoics, we believe in respecting the autonomy and independence of others, especially the person we care about deeply. One crucial behavior to avoid is being overly controlling or possessive. Imagine a garden where each plant has the space and freedom to grow. If you start to control where each leaf goes, the garden won't flourish. It will wither. Similarly, in a relationship, being controlling or possessive can suffocate the other person's spirit. Trust and freedom are vital ingredients for a thriving relationship. When you try to dictate her choices or movements, it doesn't just show a lack of trust. 
It screams insecurity. It's like trying to hold water in your hands. The tighter you squeeze, the more it slips away. Instead, allow her the freedom to make her own choices and support her journey. This doesn't mean being indifferent. It means showing respect for her individuality. For instance, if she wants to spend time with her friends or pursue a hobby, encourage it. Don't bombard her with questions or make her feel guilty for wanting time apart. By respecting her space, you're showing that you trust her and value her independence. A healthy relationship is built on respect, not control. When both partners feel free and trusted, the bond becomes stronger. Remember, a stoic approach to relationships means focusing on what you can control, your own actions and reactions. Let go of the need to control her and instead cultivate trust and respect. This way, your relationship will be a beautiful garden where both of you can grow and flourish. In essence, never tell her what to do or where to go. Instead, foster a partnership where both of you feel valued and respected. This will not only make your relationship healthier, but also more fulfilling. As we conclude our discussion today on the art of conversation and stoic communication, it's clear that mastering these skills requires patience and consistent practice. Stoicism teaches us the value of self-control and wisdom, emphasizing the importance of mindful speech and respect in our interactions. Continue to follow your routine and absorb these teachings gradually. Indeed, some of these concepts might only begin to make sense after one session, but with ongoing practice and by weaving them into your everyday life, you will start to see a remarkable transformation in how others react to you. It's vital to avoid the phrases we've identified and stick to the stoic guidelines we've covered. As you integrate these principles more fully, you'll notice a positive shift in your relationships, especially with women. We hope this exploration into Stoic principles has not only enlightened you, but also equipped you with the tools to navigate your interactions more gracefully. If you found value in our conversation today, please show your support by hitting that like button and sharing this video with others who might benefit. Your engagement helps us grow and continue providing insightful content. And we'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below typing, I know how to talk, to let us know that these lessons have resonated with you. Also, don't forget to check out the recommended videos on screen for more guidance on mastering the art of stoic conversation. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so to stay updated with our latest discussions. Stay till the end, keep learning, and keep striving to be your best self.